How's it going everybody? Chaotic Meatball here and welcome back to the 3D6 challenge series. So today we've got a Pokemon that actually doesn't evolve in Gen 3, but does in the next set of games and that is Apom. It's a basic normal type that is already an indicator that we're gonna have trouble against Brock. But guess what? We get Sand Attack at level 6 and Astonish at level 13. While Ghost type moves are physical in this generation, Astonish has a chance to flinch, and adding on to the accuracy deprivation of Sand Attack, we shouldn't be walled and we should be able to get through pretty quickly. Along with those moves, Apom gets Fury Swipes and Swift by level up. Nothing crazy, though Swift is useful, but the fact that Apom can get a move for almost any type by TM, like Water Pulse, Solar Beam, Iron Tail, Thunderbolt, Return, Dig, Shadow Ball, Brick Break, Aerial Ace, you name it, Apom's probably gonna learn it unless it's Ice Beam, since for some reason nothing in Johto likes to learn Ice Beam. Match that with a base 70 attack and base 85 speed, physical attacks are going to hurt the opponents. HP, defense, and special defense are all at a rock solid 55 as well, though special attack is at a base 40. It'll be a pain to deal with if I'm using moves like Water Pulse or Thunderbolt, but there won't be that many Pokemon that I'll be fighting until the Elite Four that I'll be needing those moves. But before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to the channel since three-fourths of you guys aren't subscribed. Come on guys, it's been nearly 15 videos or so since I started pushing this, and that number has not gone lower than 75%. Just subscribe. Just do it. You know you want to. Either way though, let's just get right down to business. So, there's really not a choice to replace any of the starters that makes it harder or easier. So, I just replaced Squirtle and gave my rival Bulbasaur since it's the most annoying to deal with thanks to status afflictions. It's an easy three shot with Tackle when you need the fight, and that's a pretty good start, but now it's the Trek to level 13 to make sure I get both Sand Attack and Astonish before making it to Rock. I basically made sure to fight every wild Pokemon I encountered to get to that point, getting to level 7 before even getting to the Viridian Forest. There's 5 trainers in here, and by the end I made it just shy of level 12. Not a big deal, I just encountered 2 encounters on Northern Route 2 to get to level 12 before fighting off a few wild Pokemon in the forest to reach level 13. I didn't necessarily want to go against the junior trainer in the gym without Astonish, and that was a smart decision since I still ended the fight at about a third of my HP just shy of level 14. Admittedly, it took around 4 resets to beat Brock, which is actually pretty nice for a normal type. I went straight for Sand Attack on Geodude, getting 4 of them off before getting hit with a single tackle. I managed to get off all 6 and flinch Geodude around 60% of the time with Astonish, taking it down with barely a scratch. Unfortunately though, by the time I got to Onix, I was out of Astonishes, so I just used 6 Sand Attacks, only getting hit with a single Rock Tomb before going for a bunch of scratches. I was kind of worried I was going to run out of power points, but looking back, that really wasn't a problem. The battle was just a war of accuracy at that point, and once I got that critical, it was all over. Onyx couldn't hit me, and I got the boulder badge free of charge. Alright, I know, I complained about accuracy dropping in the Murray video, but I have to take advantage of moves if I can get them naturally, especially if I'm a normal type going against Brock. With that said, I'm probably not going to be using it anymore. And with that also said, I essentially rushed to Cerulean City since she's got the TM for Water Pulse, the thing that absolutely will replace Astonish when I get it since I'm better off having a super effective special move on things like Geodude and Onyx instead of a physical ghost move. On my way out of Mount Moon though, I grabbed the Helix Fossil since I got heads on my coin flip. I still don't know of the count of who's ahead, whether it be Helix or Dome. So if you want to count them up from previous episodes, starting with Igglybuff, because that's when I started doing the coin flips, and want to heart on your comment, go ahead and add them up, and I'll make sure that it's added in the script for the next 3d6 challenge. Also on my way through Route 4, I taught Apom Mega Kick, not Mega Punch, since I wanted an absolute power move that could wreck through both Misty's and Rival 2's teams. Having something like this is certainly going to make it easier to get through some boss fights up until I get returned south of Lavender Town after Band 3, so we'll get there soon enough. Misty's trainers are nothing to be afraid of, getting Apom to level 23 before healing and taking Misty on. Staryu's out first, so I go for Mega Kick, missing, sure, but no damage because Staryu used Harden, a useless move I may add, because it did not prevent me from KOing with another Mega Kick, leading to Starmie. 
Mega Kick connects again as she leads with a Water Pulse, going down to a second and letting me win the fight. Thank you, I will take that Cascade badge, but I will want that TM a lot more than anything else. Rival 2 also only takes one try after healing, as Pidgeotto is a one-shot with a critical Mega Kick, overkill if I may say, Scratch is a one-shot with Rattata, did I just reverse the- whatever, Abra is a one-shot with Scratch, and Bulbasaur evades a Mega Kick, but goes down to a second critical, winning me the fight. I swear, I read these scripts, and I just mix up words, I don't know how it happens, it's like when I said Executute in the Deoxys video, some things just happen. <sighs> Rival 2 went pretty fast though, so I went ahead and grabbed the SS ticket and went straight for Rival 3. Oh yeah, you thought you were off the hook, dude. No, I'm kicking your punk-ass Pokemon into next week. Pidgeotto's a start again as a one-shot with Mega Kick. Raticate goes down to a two-hit Fury Swipes as they replace Scratch earlier, as does Kadabra leaving just Ivysaur. Mega Kick is a one-shot, meaning he couldn't even land a single attack. Bye bye loser, see ya next time. One trade, bike voucher, and cut later, and it's surge time. Now, normally I wouldn't want to go against him with contact moves, but it really worked just fine with Water Pulse on my side. Mega Kick was a one shot on Voltorb since it doesn't have static, and Pikachu is a two shot with Water Pulse, only getting a single double team up. Last up is Raichu, and I figured since this last Pokemon, Mega Kick is the ideal solution. KOing with one shot, and winning the fight without even getting paralyzed. Well, so much for your electricity, you surging fellow. You're no match for the monkey with an arm as a tail. With the stretch of Route 9, Rock Tunnel, and Route 10 out of the way, I went straight down towards Route 12 to get Return. It's a move that's going in place of Mega Kick, since despite the fact that it's around 18 power less than Mega Kick at max, it has much, much better accuracy than Mega Kick. I didn't teach it for Erica though, since I could clear out this gym with Aerial Ace, so I just replaced Fury Swipes with it so that I could just run through everyone with my high physical attack stat. The fact that they also give me a lot of money is worth fighting everyone in there before Erica, getting halfway towards level 42 before facing off, held Cherry Berry and all. She leads with Victory Bell, barely surviving an Aerial Ace as she misses with Stun Spore and Heals, so I went for two Swifts to take it down, leading to Tangela. I outsped and crit with Swift to take it down, leading to Vileplume, which I also took down with two Swifts, using the Cherry Berry to heal from Vileplume's Stun Spore as I took it down for the win and the Rainbow Batch. Well, can't use Giga Drain, but I'll take it for some money. Speaking of money... Giovanni, I've come to collect! Water Pulse is one shot on Onyx and Rhyhorn, leading to Kangaskhan. It hits a Mega Punch and Tail Whip as I KO with three Swifts, winning the fight in short order. Alright, thank you for your money, now bye bye. I ended up replacing Mega Kick with Swift since it's the most helpful in dealing with those stupid accuracy modifying moves, and Aerial Ace can take care of anything that happens to have a weakness to it, or if I have to deal with ghost types, still, again, evading its accuracy modifying moves. Speaking of ghost types, the Pokemon Tower was made easy thanks to it, leading to Rival 4. Or, well, Rival 4 is first, but you know what I mean. I may not have my power moves, but I'll still take him down pretty easily, I'm sure. Aerial Ace is a near one-shot with Pidgeotto, taking it down after a very weak gust, leading to Gyarados. Swift is a two-shot, surprisingly, though Thrash does a bit of damage, though nothing to worry about. Growlithe is a one-shot with Water Pulse, Kadabra is a one-shot with Swift, leaving just Ivysaur. Aerial Ace is again helpful with him, doing massive damage as I got hit with Razor Leaf, taking me down below half as I finish him off yet again. Leave me alone, kid. I have a region to grope with this monkey's tail. Sweeping through most ghosts was easy thanks to Water Pulse and Aerial Ace, getting me the Poke Flute pretty quickly. So it's time to decide if I'm going to go fast or if I'm going to level. I actually wanted to level a little bit, so I went through the docks on routes 12 and 13 before biking through the cycling road, stopping for the power point up and max elixir before arriving at Fuchsia. Usually I go to grab the HMs first, but I wanted to run through the gym ASAP, so I just ran over everybody in there with Swift. Nothing stood in my way, including Koga himself. He leads with coughing, barely surviving a Swift to deliver a Toxic. Two Swifts later, and it goes down. But it's kind of useless, because Toxic is going to kill me before I can even take down his last three Pokemon. So I realized I needed a wee bit more in terms of levels. 
Though in hindsight, I could have just tossed for turn over Swift and used Aerial Ace as my accuracy dodging move and destroyed him immediately, but I'm dumb, so we're just gonna have to get over that one real quick. Try number two, and it was perfect since Swift was now a one shot on coughing. Muck still decided to use Minimize for nothing. Second coughing, same as the first, leaving just wheezing. Surprisingly, I can't even two-shot this thing. So he heals after delivering two sludges to Apom's face, doing a third after a second hyper potion. He didn't use another one after a fourth sludge though, allowing me to win the fight with another Swift. Toxic might come in handy later, but I'll keep it in my back pocket along with the soul badge. Self company time, and I honestly didn't want to deal with any trainers here, so I just immediately grabbed the card key on the fifth floor, then headed back to the third floor to take on the one required trainer to get you rival five. Somehow, I got here just short of four hours of in game time, which is pretty wild with a normal type, but let's see how well I do. First try, and I get a critical swift on Pidgeot for the one shot, leading to Gyarados. It's a three shot with two swifts and an aerial ace, taking a wheat bite before going down. Growlithe was a one-shot with Water Pulse, as per usual, leading to Alakazam. Somehow, it survives a Swift and gets off of Future Sight before going down, leaving just Venusaur. Aerial Ace now isn't quite a two-shot thanks to Venusaur being pretty bulky, so I took a Razor Leaf and the Future Sight attack before hitting a second one. Then he for some reason goes for Poison Powder, and since I still have a Pecha Berry that I was holding for the fight against Koga, it activated, nullifying his attack and allowed me to KO with a third Aerial Ace and win the fight. Bye bye kiddo, smell you later loser, how do you like it? Ugh. Man, it's almost like I'm gaining more and more hatred for some of these characters. Giovanni, Bruno, my rival... Nobody in this region is safe from my wrath, I'm just saying. Speaking of Giovanni, time to get run over yet again, my friend. Nidorinos' lead as I went for Swift, KOing in one shot and leading to Nidoqueen. Water Pulse is my friend against a ground type, KOing in two of those and a Swift after confusing it and only getting nailed with Tail Whip. Can, can you hurt Apom with something? Well, you can use Rage with Kangaskhan. Of course you can use Rage. Great decision, Giovanni. That's the only attack you're landing since Kangaskhan is two-shot with Swift and Rhyhorn's one-shot with Water Pulse. My lord, man, you want to be a crime boss? I could take over the whole bi-regional area of Kanto and Johto if I was in power in place of you. <sighs> Maybe it'll be about time I take a look at a Team Rocket ROM hack for Professor Oak's challenge in the future, just to prove that I can complete the Pokedex and take over the region without much of a problem. Anyway, after picking up both HM03 and 04, I went straight for Cinnabar Island with Lapras, grabbing the secret key from the Pokemon Mansion and running through Blaine's trainers. Alright, let's see if we can take him down. Growlithe's up first, and Water Pulse is the one-shot. Good start, as is Ponyta. Great start, he's starting in the order that I like him to go, but let's see those evolutions. Rapidash is a two-shot, missing Fire Blast. Alright, sweet, all of my effort is here for Arcanine. I went for Water Pulse, confusing on my first hit, and making him hit himself, putting him in perfect range for a KO with a second Water Pulse. Uh, how? How did that happen? Can anyone do anything to Apom? I mean, I don't want you to hurt my little buddy over here, but like, dang, man. Y'all don't seem to be able to do shit. Speaking of people who can't do shit, it's time for Sabrina straight after. Honestly, I forgot that I didn't grab her badge since I was thinking of Giovanni for that segue. But hey, we can't win them all. Actually, we can. She leads with Kadabra, so I went for Swift for a one-shot. Mr. Mime's second, going down as well. Venomoth is third, down to Swift, Alakazam, yeah, down to Swift as well, at level 69. Nice. Alright, look, I'm not Christian Pokemon Champion, I can't sing. So, I'm just gonna never do that again, and we're gonna pretend like it never happened. I guess we can go Rapid Fire style, though, and go straight into Giovanni, since I took out his trainers before fighting him. I still have Water Pulse, so Rhyhorn was a one-shot. Nidoqueen is a one-shot critical with Water Pulse, leading to Nidoking. I went for Pulse again, doing over half as I took a Light Earthquake, taking it down and leading to Doug Trio. The rest of his team just couldn't touch me either, as everything else fell to Water Pulse, winning me the fight and getting Giovanni's $5,000 yet again. You should be happy I don't have the amulet coin! So first things first, before Rival 6, I headed over to the Celadon game corner and bought 8,500 coins so that I'd be able to grab both Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball. I figured both of these are going to be super useful throughout the league for Lorelei and Agatha respectively, 
At least this time, I didn't forget to grab Ice Beam because Apom could not learn Ice Beam. So, it was definitely worth the 170,000 Poké Dollars I spent on them. First try on Rival 6 wasn't too terrible, though I noticed Aerial Ace wasn't a two-shot on Pidgeot. So, I adjusted to Swift after getting hit with a light attack, taking it out with a critical and leading to Rhyhorn. Say hello to Water Pulse. Bye. Third is Gyarados. Definitely could have stood to have Thunderbolt since Swift is a three-shot, getting hit with a rain-boosted Hydro Pump. But it wasn't too bad since I took it out as well as Growlithe with a rain-boosted Water Pulse. Haha, <laughs> nerd, it's your fault that I had more behind that. Alakazam's fifth and only used a single Calm Mind as I took it out with two Swifts, leaving just Venusaur. This thing's annoying, but at least I have Aerial Ace, but even that doesn't do very much, and sure enough, that was the finisher on me, as he used Growth and took me out with two Razor Leaves. Alright, well the only thing that did a bit of damage on me here was Gyarados, so I replaced Swift with Thunderbolt and went back in. Second attempt, and I didn't get hit at all throughout his first three Pokemon, though taking a Feather Dance and two Intimidates from Gyarados and Growlithe makes Aerial Ace basically useless. Growlithe is a near one-shot with Water Pulse, taking itself down with Takedown, pun intended, and Alakazam is a four-shot with Thunderbolt, Aerial Ace, and two more Thunderbolts, and I'm already at too low of HP to take on Venusaur. Alright, hmm, I guess I just need not get hit with Feather Dance? Fourth try, no. Fifth try, and yay, Wing Attack! So that helps to take down Rhyhorn, Gyarados, and Growlithe straight after, and gives me more than enough power to take out Alakazam with three Aerial Aces, but he, of course, decided it was a good idea to actually attack with Alakazam, taking me down to red with two Psychics before KOing me with Venusaur's Razor Leaf. Alright then, clearly it's time for a few more trainers to get me a few more levels. East of Cinnabar and South of Fuchsia were perfect routes for training, getting Apom to level 75. Alright, this should be good enough. Let's see. I'll, I also taught Return over Sand Attack, so this battle should be a bit easier just as well. He leads with Pidgeot again, and now Thunderbolt is a one-shot, so I can't get hit by Feather Dance at all. Rhyhorn's still a one-shot with Water Pulse, Gyarados is a one-shot with Thunderbolt, and Growlithe is now not a range with Water Pulse, so it goes down. I'm still minus two in attack, so that hurts for Alakazam, but Return is still a one-shot, showing just how much power it has. Venusaur actually got looped into Synthesis healing after using Growth thanks to Apom doing nearly half with Return. And after going for a decent Razor Leaf, Apom finishes it with one more return, winning the fight. I wonder if I even needed to level if I had gone for a return straight away. Oh well, I'm better off at the levels. One victory road later, and last minute prep time. I got out of there at level 80 and still had 6 rare candies sitting around, so I bought 12 full restores even though I only needed like 4, deposited my HM mules, and went in. First try on Lorelei went extremely well as she leads the Dugong, a two-shot with Thunderbolt after hitting an Ice Beam for a fourth of my HP leading to Cloyster. I don't know why you tossed that out. Bye, thanks Thunderbolt. Third is Slowbro, who went down to a Thunderbolt in return. I used return after she used Amnesia, so I didn't want to risk Thunderbolt not KOing after that. Lapras is fourth as we trade status afflictions with her getting paralyzed and Apom getting confused. Luckily, both activated on the same turn, allowing for Apom to finish her off next turn with Return, leaving just Jinx. It's a brutal thing, so Return's a simple one-shot, beating her in one try. Alright, no rare candies just yet, let's see if Bruno can be beaten despite Apom being a normal type. He leads with Onyx, good thing I still have Water Pulse, it's gone. Second is Hitmonchan, and despite being the more defensive of the Hitmons, it's still a one-shot with Return, as is Hitmonlee leading to Machamp. I'm scared of this thing's cross chop, but it uses bulk up after I used return, allowing me to finish it scot-free and leaving his second onyx to be taken down with water pulse. Shoot, you're not supposed to be that much of a joke, Bruno. Come on, man. Well, Agatha is up next, and I tried without Shadow Ball and saw that Thunderbolt and Aerial Ace was a three shot on the first Gengar, hitting a toxic before I could take it out quickly enough. Well, I can already tell that that's the end. Heck, even Golbat isn't a one-shot with Thunderbolt, so yeah, it's time for a Lumberry and Rare Candies. And even then, it took a few attempts before I found my way. If I had another TM for Return or for Water Pulse, I would replace them with Shadow Ball, but I really couldn't afford to swap anything on my moveset for this fight. So much for Shadow Ball. She leads with Gengar, only using a single double team as I took it down with two Aerial Aces, leading to Golbat. Returns a one-shot, leading to Arbok. Intimidate definitely made a things a bit harder to KO, 
but I did heal Locker after a single Screech, taking down Arbok and leading to Gengar. I went for Water Pulse in an attempt to confuse, but it didn't work, barely doing anything as she landed a decent Sludge Bomb, so I figured Thunderbolt would be better for more damage, just to happening to get a crit and finishing it off, so clearly that was the correct choice. Then hit another crit with Aerial Ace on Haunter to finish the battle. Well then, I guess all I needed was insane luck back to back. Neat! Lance ended up not being super difficult, only taking two attempts to win. After all, I have Thunderbolt for both Gyarados and Aerodactyl, and return for massive damage on everything else since Apom can't learn Ice Beam. I can control the weather, summon a ball of shadows to strike ethereally, and absorb sunlight to concentrate a beam for attacking, but it can't use ice. Good stuff, Game Freak. Making sense is for p***s. Lance leads with Gyarados, and despite Intimidate, the battle's still easy as Thunderbolt to one-shot leading to Aerodactyl. It only hits a single Ancient Power before he heals and I get a critical Thunderbolt to take it out, sending Dragonite out third. I went for Return for about half as he went for Safeguard, so I figured it would be wise to go for Thunderbolt for both damage and to get his Citrus Berry to pop without it being another two attacks to KO. But he goes for a massive Hyper Beam, so it didn't actually matter since I could have used the recovery turn to KO. But hey, one returns plenty enough, leaving his two Dragonairs. I outspeed the first, hitting return for barely not a one-shot as I got nailed with Dragon Rage, and KO'd next turn after he healed with a Hyper Potion with a high roll, leaving the second to go down to the same high roll, winning me the fight. Even if I didn't get that second high roll, Apom could have made it through a second Dragon Rage since it still had over 40 HP, but it wasn't too bad. Anyway, champion time and two attempts in, just like Lance, it was done and over with. He leads with Pidgeot, so I went for return to KO immediately, bypassing Feather Dance and leading straight into Alakazam. I do the same with a critical, and Rhinon goes down to Water Pulse straight after. Alright, this is clean, and fourth is Gyarados, so Thunderbolt continues the clean streak, clean into Arcanine. Water Pulse isn't quite a two-shot, but a critical return after the first Water Pulse made it so, leading to Venusaur. My lord, he's making it too easy. He used Growth, as I did over a third with Return, then he went for Solar Beam, locking him in and not letting him heal, allowing me to finish it with a third return for the KO and the win. Man, that was easy! I mean, I'm still level 88, and Apom did get crushed in the Elite Four round two, so there's no reason to me showing it, but getting there at level 89 with a time of six hours and four minutes puts it right behind Natsu as the second best Pokemon through this challenge so far. I'm actually surprised that Apom was able to do that well, but with the help of an extremely diverse moveset, there's no reason that it couldn't solve any problem that was put in my way. With that said, next time on the main 3D6 challenge, we're going to go back to super duper bad Pokemon in the form of Sunkern. I'm not looking forward to it. Not. At. All. See you guys then! Hey guys, thank you so much for watching, and make sure to hit that subscribe button so we can get the non-sub viewership percentage down to 60%. And while you're at it, I really appreciate it if you hit that like button and turned on notifications so that you'll be shown when these videos are going live and when premieres are going down since I love to chat with you guys as we watch the runs together. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.